Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV. There's going to be two videos, two Redman Roundups out today. This is more of a breaking news video, however, a Redman Roundup will be coming out in a couple of hours as well. Um, it was supposed to come out sooner, but that can wait. David Ornstein has just confirmed on Twitter that it had a making that confirmed interest. Now, if you want to trust your source hammers and you want to go and see the stream earlier, I did mention this. And if you saw what I said, I didn't think there was any reliable journalists in that moment confirming the interest from Al Itahad. But I was never going to be surprised, considering the three extra weeks that Saudi have in their window, if they were going to go back in for Mo Salah. Let's analyse this situation. Someone said something that really resonated, like I really thought about, and they said, is Salah the type of man to move to Saudi? And even though we haven't had concrete, uh, concrete interest, and even though... Um, they, well, we have, but no bids or anything like that. And even though his agent has came out and defended what the player wants, which is to stay in Europe, to prove himself on the European stage, to win more things with Liverpool, he loves the club, he wants to stay. Now, that's important. But then when does it get to a point where a man's loyalty is tested? It doesn't mean he's not loyal, but now we're talking millions upon millions upon millions and there's rumours that he's going to be offered the most money in that league why is that not surprising like I said about the question why would Salah go to Saudi number one Muslim athlete in the world that league is only ever growing the finances are beyond 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 the charts they've still got their own little champions league they've got their own little league it's just there's incentives there right and even though right now might be too soon and I think Salah in his mind knows that he can just go there anytime but at the same time it's still one to be concerned about because again who's to say that they won't go in there and at least try and tempt Salah with the finances and all these excessive things and no Salah doesn't need money and I do think he will stay I'm not saying he's gonna go but this is interesting the fact that Saudi even after the agency talk even after all this is now coming out and saying listen I do think they're going to make a big offer and they're going to make Salah's head turn a little bit. I do believe this just from what I'm just from what I'm seeing because, listen, the agent came out and said we want to stay at Liverpool, which is important. But at the same time, we also know a big reason why Salah wanted to stay was because he wanted more money, which is fine. It's great that he wants more money and very understandable. But what if it was a ploy? The same way that Salah's agent has used a ploy before and I am just being thought-provoking. But think about it. What if he's came out, said, we're happy to stay at Liverpool just so Saudi increased the finances? Because if you show interest from the initial talks, you now look like you're willing to participate. If you're not willing to participate but they're saying, no, but wait there, we need you. You bring significant more viewers and you bring the quality right here, right now. If we signed you, Mohamed Salah, we're signing one of the most informed players in Europe based on numbers over the last five years and by the way number one Muslim athlete literally fits the criteria of the face that they're looking for for that league Cristiano Ronaldo is great and he's huge but Mohamed Salah the shift that he will cause there would be insane so I think that if he goes the influence that causes is huge for that league more eyes go on the league it's another superstar you can argue based on name value they've got three out of the five biggest names in world football you know you think of the five biggest names you think of Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar um, Mbappe and Salah pretty much I mean I might be missing a name or two there to be fair but genuinely you know especially out of the forwards if they've got three of those names out of the big five that just now shows how big Saudi are getting so don't think just because Salah's agent has come out oh he's definitely staying now you can use likelihood likelihood he's going to stay because of what we've seen and what we know we can't just speculate based off nothingness but what we can do is analyze well, heads have been turned before. Did you ever think Jordan Henderson was going to leave? And I understand he was going to have a significantly less role in the team, but there was other things that tempted him. Fabinho was always going to keep starting. Fabinho was never going to be replaced, as we know, based on hindsight. So Fabinho was also tempted. We wanted to keep Fabinho. Maybe not FSG, but Klopp definitely wanted to keep Fabinho, no doubt. And then Fabinho was willing to go. He was like, this money is just a bit too much. And, and think about it, Fabinho was like a little Portuguese, sorry, Brazilian scouser. He was boss, you know what I mean? His Portuguese dash scouse accent was just brilliantly put together. So that's why I'm saying to you guys, like, it's not impossible. And it's certainly not out of the realms of possibility because it does get to a point where it's like, okay, legacy's boss. But all these zeros are a little bit fucked up. Now we can talk about, is this a problem or is this not a problem? In some ways it is because it is getting a bit unfair, but in some ways it's not because they've got the money to splash, you know what I mean? And we've got the right to say yes or no. Um, but if Salah does start entertaining these talks, that's when it gets interesting. So for now, it's only a David Ornstein tweet. But do expect there be... Um, and he's not always right. 
But there is sometimes legs behind to what he says. And if Al Itahad do, imagine if Al Itahad come in with a hundred million pounds off it, hundred and twenty million pounds off it, hundred and fifty. Now we've got a thing. So all they need to do is they've got a lot to do. They've got to turn the players' heads, and they've also got to make sure that FSG are on board with the amount that they're offering them. Imagine 150 million for a 30 plus year old. I'm not saying that I'd sell him because I don't think we'd replace him, so I wouldn't. But the club might, and the club might think about it. So now you th and we've already got a really good attack. So in the club's mind, they're like, well, we might be fine without him. You know, we have got an 85 million Darwin Nunes there on the bench who needs to play more games. So. Yeah, it's worrying. I don't think the club will sell him, though. I, I, I don't think there's any offer, surely, that they'll say, well, we're going to let go of our best player over the past five years based on numbers. Um, it doesn't really make too much sense to me. But let me know what you think. This was mad. Um, and there will be another Redman round about in a little bit. So if you are enjoying the consistency and all that juicy stuff, then do smash a like. Um, it's getting interesting, people, so do let me know what, what's going on. <laughs> anyway, you can watch the stream earlier if you want some more details. This is more of an update. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for watching, and I'll see you and your mothers in a bit. Peace.